Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, I've got terrible news for gamers. AMD's next-gen desktop APUs leak, gaming performance from Intel's first discrete GPU, Intel royally screwed up, and should Nvidia and AMD be worried about this? Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you've been hoping to get your hands on a new GPU, it may be a really long time. According to a new report, Apple's own supplier Foxconn has been forced to reduce shipments by 10% due to global chip shortages. The company's chairman, Yang Liu, stated, quote, The first two months of this quarter was still okay, as our clients are all very big, but we started to see changes happening this month. What's even worse is that he claims the shortages will likely extend to at least the second quarter of next year. Basically, things are looking bleak to say the least. Foxconn obviously isn't manufacturing these GPUs, but this is a picture of the industry as a whole. And with the high demand from both gamers and miners, who knows when stock will finally catch up. But first, in honor of Intel once again using their 14 nanometer process for the company's 11th gen release, I'm relaunching the 14 nanometer plus 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 infinity mugs. That's right, keep your coffee hot for hours, though not as hot as Intel keeps their CPUs. And now with the new enamel mug, you can show off without fear of breaking it like Intel broke the hearts of gamers everywhere with 11th gen. Get your mug before Intel finally goes 10 nanometers at store.gamermeld.com. Next up, President Leaker Momomo underscore US apparently found and shared an unreleased product data sheet from AMD. In it, you can see that it clearly lists specs for the company's next-gen desktop APUs, so let's go over them. First up, when it comes to the core count, things are the same as last gens, ranging from 4 to 8 cores. The main difference really comes in at clocks, as both the base and boost frequencies across the board get a 200 MHz boost over the 4000G models. Of course, these are also based on Zen 3, so the CPUs will get the same uplift in IPC performance that the regular Ryzen CPUs got. At the end of the day, the biggest hope is that AMD will actually release these to the DIY market, as their last gen parts were OEM only. Next up for today, Intel's first publicly available discrete GPU, Asus's DG1, just got its first benchmark. Now, for those who don't know, the card was first unveiled earlier this year, along with another third-party model that was fan-cooled. This version is passively cooled, and while it's a slightly cut-down version of the DG1 made for developers, it's still a glimpse of what Intel can do with their XE GPU architecture. Anyway, the card was originally spotted in base mark by Tel Mapasat, and when it comes to performance, DG1 gets just under the RX 550 in their Vulkan API test. Of course, DG1 isn't meant to be a powerhouse of a GPU, but keep in mind that Intel's parts come with 640 cores versus the RX 550's 512. Not to mention the fact that AMD's RX 550 is a fairly old architecture at this point. With that said, DG1 apparently runs on 30 watts versus the 50 watt RX 550. Ultimately, it looks okay, but not nearly as good as I'd hoped. Maybe it's more of a driver issue? Time, as always, will tell. And speaking of driver issues, Intel made a whopper of a mistake with their newest 11th gen CPUs. The issue was originally found and shared by Adored TV, and it is definitely a problem. As you can see, Intel has yet to release drivers for the iGPUs present in all but the F models of Rocket Lake CPUs. Now, as Arrogame points out on Twitter, there is an older driver from Windows that should automatically install, so you will be able to use the iGPU, but that driver is over two months old at this point. To top it off, Intel's own VP, Lisa Pierce, actually stated that a driver made for Rocket Lake won't be available for a few weeks. And I love how she just says it so matter-of-fact, as if it's completely normal that a company would release a product without drivers and a few weeks could easily be months. No apologies for the terrible mistake, nothing. Hopefully this isn't indicative of Intel's future commitment to their discrete GPUs. I mean, anyone who follows the market knows just how important GPU drivers are, and specifically how hard they can be to get right. Hopefully Intel is up for the task, but this doesn't bode well. And lastly for today, this 7 nanometer GPU wasn't made from AMD, Nvidia, or Intel. 
The upcoming GPU actually comes from Shanghai Tianshu Intellectual Semiconductor Co. And I actually discussed it back when they first announced the GPU earlier this year. Well, according to their recent announcement, it's nearing mass production and commercial availability. Not only that, but according to the new information, it is in fact made from TSMC's 7 nanometer process. When it comes to performance, the company claims the GPU, codenamed Big Island, can get up to 37 teraflops of FP32 compute. For reference, AMD's newest MI100 gets up to 23.1, or with matrix computations 46.1 teraflops. It really just depends on what the company means. The company claims they get twice the performance to their competitors with lower power consumption and at a better price to performance. Of course, while I'm not sure on that double performance claim, the upcoming GPU is clearly a monster. It's up there with the best. With that said, the processor is a general purpose GPU, so it's not meant for gaming. But it's certainly interesting to see other companies try their hand at the tech. The GPU itself comes in different flavors, including this PCI Express version. Of course, we'll have to wait and see if the claimed performance rings true, but it definitely should get AMD and Nvidia on their feet. So while that does it for today, is Intel going to screw up their GPUs or should AMD and Nvidia worry about this new company? And if you like all things gaming hardware, make sure to check out the GamerMill Discord server. And as always, have a great day!